Hi guys, welcome to CYC. Today I want to give you four questions for you to challenge your core beliefs, values, ideas. And this isn't to change your mind on any of them, it's just to challenge them because the world's going to challenge them. So kind of prepare and just have the ideas strong and able to be challenged. So question number one, to challenge, to really dig deep and figure out what these values are made of. Question number one, is it true? Kind of easy question. Good question to ask, has to be asked, but like, it's kind of easy. Number two, to dig down deep, is it really true? Like 100% guaranteed, are you, like, is it guaranteed to be true? And I'll give you a hint, the answer should be no, because everything should be like 99% sure at most, because we're all kind of just sussing our way out we're all trying to figure stuff out and it's like it's the theory of like evolution or theory of gravity and yes i know oh man there's enough evidence i get it but gravity could work slightly differently than we currently understand it there could be just like a little tweak that lets you combine quantum physics with newtonian physics or like whatever else um there could be like just slight, slight tweaks. We could figure out that there's a fourth dimension and it affects the world in a weird way and all the rest. Okay, I'm not trying to give you any scientific ideas here. I'm just trying to say it's possible, technically. And especially when it comes to our own individual stuff. Like I am the provider and protector of this family. Okay, stuff could change. As in that's not who you are, that's the role you have at the moment, but like, you could lose your job, um, your partner could get a promotion, <laughs> and we've seen enough sitcoms and movies about guys being like egotistical and kind of uh, bitter about that. Um, also, like something physical, like you could get assaulted or something like that. Like I'm not trying to put that out into the world, I'm just trying to say that it's not who you are, it's just the role you play at the moment. Um, and that's actually exactly why I love these questions, because it's it's kind of one step closer to ego death, letting go of all of these kind of understanding what parts of us are roles. Anyway, okay, that's the second issue. Okay, so question number one, is it true? Question number two, is it really true? Question number three, is it really? No, it's not. It's not. Um, question number three. How does it make you feel when you have this belief? Because all beliefs and values and ideas kind of pay off somehow. As in, I believe I am strong and provider, protector, whatever else. Okay, that can give you a sense of confidence, a sense of purpose. Okay, so when you're asking this question, what do I get from it? I want you to think of it in three different levels. Level one is maybe the external first. We'll start with the world first. So this is going to be money and material goods, whatever that is. Level two is the other person. So you might get power, you might get respect, you might get admiration, you might like just a interest and attention. It, like it doesn't have to be massive, it could just be subtle things. And then number three would be internal. Confidence, self-esteem, sense of purpose, sense of meaning, all the rest. Okay, so that's question number three. Question number four then, what would I look like if I didn't have this belief? And when you're painting this painting, I want as much detail and color and everything, all the textures, everything in this painting. Don't give me something just kind of like, oh, I suppose I'd be like, no, really try and give it detail. And maybe this is easy because maybe the belief that you're currently trying to question is just kind of standalone. It's just like, I think dogs walk backwards or <laughs> something like that. And then you realize they walk forward and you're like, oh my God, but it doesn't change who you are. But there could be ones that are quite fundamental that kind of underpin other beliefs. Um, and you'll be surprised the spider web that can be set. Um, so we can use that example of provider protector, that sort of thing. Um, and then all of a sudden they lose their job. And that can, like you can fall down a hole. Even, even you don't even have to lose your job. Just asking the question, am I really a provider or protector? And you come up with the answer that no, you're actually not. That can, that can be a hole you can fall down. 
um, and can be that can be a dark hole. Um, so I would say to this, try not to hold on to it too tightly and try and broaden your scope. Try and zoom out a bit more. And here's a way of doing it. So you've kind of four main areas in your life. You have family, you have friends, you have hobbies and interests, whatever. And then you have your job, those four. So for your family, maybe you are the provider protector, perhaps, but you're also the mom, you're also the dad, you are the person that plays games, you're the person that teaches, you're the person that emphasizes books or something like that, whatever it is. With your friends, on the second one, your friends, you're probably not the provider and protector because um, those dynamics aren't quite at the forefront of a friendship, but you might be the impulsive idiot that gets everyone into trouble but like comes up with the good stories or you might be the nurturer and the, the mammy of the group um, or you might be the person that knows all the details about some weird game or movies or whatever else and yes I'm looking at you James um, <laughs> so you can have different roles with your friends um, then you have hobbies and interests um, and again, you can be the really disciplined person, or you can be the person that's really into the traditional side of your hobby, or you can be the person that's really into the modern version of your hobby. And it, you can bring it into work. You're a person that's really good at computers, really good at people talk, like you're a people person or whatever else. There's a load of labels that you will give yourself. And hopefully you'll recognize that they're just kind of roles, they're gears you kind of shift into in different situations. Um, so that core belief that you are provider protector, um, you can kind of let go of a little bit more. Um, but, but that's, that's an easy enough one, to be honest. You can say, is there a God? Is there free will? Is there a soul? There are big questions that when you challenge, when you ask these four questions, is it true? Is it really true? How does it make me feel when I have this belief? And then lastly, what would I look like if I didn't have this belief? Um, and I was actually asked to, because I don't believe that we have souls. Um, um, I was asked to try and pretend, put myself into the shoes of someone who does believe that they have a soul for like a week and just kind of see how it feels, see if it felt natural. And these are the four questions I asked. I was like, to try and loosen myself up, to try and open myself up to that idea um, and I'm, I'm halfway through it I, the answer to that question doesn't necessarily matter for how good these questions are <laughs> if that makes sense by the way if you do like these four questions um, they c come from um, Byron Kate um, that's who came up with them there's a book about them there's blog posts about them go look her up and um, figure all that out or him up sorry um, but uh, it's well worth a read, so I encourage you to read it. But four questions over again. Is it true? Cutting deep. Is it really true? How does it make you feel when you have that belief? And what would you look like if you didn't have it? Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you get some value out of this. I hope you kind of hold on to these because maybe you'll have like a rough idea what you want to use it on at the moment. But in the future, when you're having debates with people, it's the perfect time to reevaluate. When you get thought something new, when something's clashing, when you have that kind of internal conflict of, am I this person or am I that person? Do it with like relationships or whatever. Am I the person who is like infatuated by like the romantic love or whatever? Or am I the kind of more traditional kind of, um, set, uh, let's not label that <laughs> we can clearly see which side i fall on but okay that's it for today i will see you again next tuesday hope you enjoyed this one by the way like subscribe all the rest if you don't mind and i'll see you next tuesday bye guys